Get out of here as well. I got this range hood fixed. Bit of I'm playing around. I made the bracket a little bit more higher. The fan motor sits out a little, about yeah, a centimetre out more than what it should, but yeah, that's my conclusion. I made a new bracket to hold the motor, and that's it. I'm gonna pull the switches out and cover them in a rag. Because just the way these wires designed, I can't just unplug and, and yeah, get the electrics out and wash this in degrees up. Because here I'm stuck. Put that whole there to worry about. I probably could disconnect all that, but I'll have to draw up a wiring diagram of how it all goes back together. Because this thing is absolutely filthy. Get that out here. Um, I'll probably just tag these off. The white's obviously neutral. No, I wouldn't worry about it. I'll just wash everything in degreaser. The motor wouldn't matter if I get the motor all soaking in. I could pull that apart, strip it down and re-clean it. Put some, um, or just, or I could just cover it in a rag and tape it up with plastic. Seal it up in a plastic bag, tape it up. Same with the switches. Because they're very, very low quality switches. You can see the insides. I'll pop the switches out. Seal it up in a plastic bag. Seal this up, pull the fan blade off like it's washed. And seal the motor up in a plastic bag with some sticky tape and just soak all that in degreaser. The batten holder wouldn't matter, or that connection wouldn't matter if it gets wet because I'm always wash them in contact cleaner afterwards and blow the um, out with some compressed air to dry them out. It's none of this and the switches I'm concerned about because you've got contacts in there and bearings that I want to get wrapped with degreaser. So, yeah, I'll do that. But it does work now, so I'll give it a quick test before I do that. This thing is very, very filthy. It smells like a this olive oil, vegetable oil build up, this fatty crap I can smell. What bloody hell is it called? There it is. I can probably wash the cord too, wouldn't matter. This will dry up easily anyway, there's nothing in here that the water can damage. That's it. Off. On. It's obviously going to have a wind on the microphone, but yeah. All I can smell is just vegetable oil. Hmm. It reminds me of my grandma's house, actually. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I'll probably oil that motor, just for the hell of it. So yeah, I'll do that. Seal the motor up in a plastic bag, and the switches up in a plastic bag with some tape, and just, just go through it with a degreaser and hose it down. So yeah, if actually the way I designed that motor, the, the holder, it's actually an inch off that back, that top plate. So now there's no stress on here now. All the stress is taken off. So yeah, this whole lot's just going to get the degreasing treatment. Use of industrial grade engine degreaser. I will get this thing cleaned up pretty good. So yeah, give it a degrees, I'll dry it up, and we'll put it back together and it's just fixed. We might even stick this in our shed. We've got a little kitchen area in our shed, this will be perfect for, so yeah. Get used to clean and we'll see how she turns out. Okay, view as well. Oh, it's gonna just spread a whole thing in degrees out the electronics and all. It's a pretty hot day today, so this thing will be, um, yeah. Plenty dry by the time it's um, I finished with it, so I'll just strip the motor down, clean the bearings out, re lubricate it. That's not hard to do. As you can see, this industrial grade degrees is peeling all the crap off. It's disgusting, this thing, I tell you. It stinks. There's nothing much in the switches, so this is pretty safe to use. It doesn't wreck anything else. Look at that, you see how my hands have been just working and the grease and this thing is sticky and messy. Wash the cord. Yeah, I was soaking out the windings but I'll just get some, probably wash it out with some contact cleaner and a bit of compressed air, blow it out and then just sit it in the sun for a couple of days and should be fine. She'll fire up again. 
I mean the windings are coated in the um, insulation so nothing in it at this degree is going to work. Seeing we bought that new. Look at that, it's peeling everything off. This stuff's fantastic. Watch that little bit there. Now, if I had a big industrial or commercial dishwasher like the restaurants use, I just stick it in there as it is in the dishwasher and clean it. <laughs> but no one's done that with a ranger before, but yeah. This isn't going to get used, so I'm going to fix it up, clean it, I'm going to set it because I've got a um, little place in the kitchen in our shed that we're going to use it. It'll be a while before this is um, going to be used again. But I will give it a test on the Variac once all this motor and the switches dry out, which won't take long. Look at that. Disgusting. You could stick this in the dishwasher, but there's a little thermal fuse there. As long as you don't exceed the temperature running of that, you're fine. Look at that. It's messy. I could do it on the grass, but I do it here on the concrete. It'll all wash off. Okay, time for a refill. Look at that. It's getting everything off. Alright, let's get this bottle refilled and we we'll go again. Okay, of yours, about 10 minutes later. The degree has been still soaking in. Get this pressure washing going. But just don't hit the windings of the pressure water because you might distort the. Um, you'll. yeah, disrupt them. <laughs> On soap dispenser, you can put it's low pressure. Now look at that, that's come out very nice. As I said, the windings are insulated, so I'll probably sit this in the back of that boiling hot van for a couple of days and that'll be completely dry. Let's see where the degrees, I needed more time to penetrate, but there it looks almost brand new now, where I sprayed it. Look at that, brand new range already. I'll have it open like this, do the inside, give this a good clean out, then I'll flip it the other way and do the other side. So I'll just do this bit, get the back done. Electrical connections. See how fast I get this matter to spin. The windings are protected on this side, so plastic things here to protect the windings. So, yeah, safer to this side of the matter with pressure. Watch that scar. That didn't take much degrees and it already feels brand new. The motor may not need, may not need oil, but I'll put some in there anyway. Let's put that over here, flip it over. And I'll spray some more on here. So yeah. There's a little bit more. A bit of rust there, but this degrees will take care of that. Matter feels better, not slimy and grimy like it was. More on those blades. More under there. Bloody cricket, die. Wash your plug top of water. 
some very good to help get the gaudy finger marks I put on there off. And this thing should look brand new once all the grease is washed off. And let this thing soak for a couple of minutes. And this upper edge here, the dust collects and builds up as well, all the cracks of the so. Flip that around. minutes to soak and she'll be clean as new. I'm now going to wash my hand because this alkaline salts based degreaser gives you skin irritation so yeah. Give it a couple of minutes and we'll come back and do it another wash cycle. Reviews, time for the upsides, the sides we normally see which is this part and the part that bolts up and it sticks up and all your ceiling crap builds up on. All it takes is a bit of industrial grade degreaser and she's fixed. fan blew itself, dry as I washed it. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you don't know what you're doing. This is only just going to be a spare unit, so... Okay, we all as well. Let's put it back together. Seems to be pretty clean. That's very clean. That looks almost like brand new. Let's try and pick this thing back up here. That looks bloody good now. Bit of water trapped up in here, but got grass and crap which will blow out once it dries. Feels brand new. Look at that. Not a single bit of grease. Hey, switches are more responsive. <laughs> we weren't quite that responsive before. Want a gunk come out from behind there. Sounds good. Look at that brand new looking fan motor. Looks shiny as all hell near that little bolt and washer. That didn't even reflect light before. Let's give it a little, um, I'll put it back together and, yeah, we'll go from there. So, yeah. Okay, of yours, well, that is absolutely clean. I uh, do not smell one trace of grease on this thing now. There's barely a smell of anything left on this, so, this might be blowing any rotten olive oil and grease anymore so just in case you're wondering it's a Chado Grange brand so I suppose Chado must be the brand and Grange must be the model either way just a piece of tin with a motor and a light bulb holder in it and some switches they're definitely more responsive they used to stick a bit so they're definitely better I'll spray these a contact cleaner and in the motor windings, a contact cleaner to help dissipate any um, moisture out. Just so it's, um, yeah, drives all the moisture out. I won't be turning it on now though. Give it a couple of days to dry on its own. Then we'll fire it up. Let, it, let, let the motor run for about an hour or so. The heat from the 
when it's running will dry out any excess moisture trapped in the windings and should be fine. But yeah, that's definitely better than what it was. Next thing I do is just neaten up these wires, tuck them all in here, contact clean the switches, and probably that too in there. Screw it all back together, which she's fixed. Brand new again. So yeah, we'll do that. While I'm there, viewers, light grill, which contains all the screws and the two plastic clips which hold the little mesh diffusers on. Got a good fine strainer to stop the screws from going down. And they've been soaking and degreasing for a little bit because they, they too are very, very dirty. So, a bit of a wash down. That's smart to have some dirty water come off it. Much better. Now this side. <laughs> yeah, don't breathe that stuff in. Ugh, the alkaline salts. Ugh. Should be using that in the ventilated area too, by the way. Should be long enough. Let's see how she found out. Yeah, clean already. That didn't take long. A little bit of muck there, but... <coughs> Whoa! Yeah, don't breathe in when you're using that stuff. Everything just sits inside that strainer. Oh, I'll just lay this rag out, chuck all the screws in here, dry them off. There are the ones that go inside the wall, and that's just stainless steel when I use a tap the threads in that motor bracket. That turned out pretty damn clean, so. Yeah, I'll dry this off and we can reassemble it. And yeah, she's all done, she's all fixed. So yeah, we'll do that. Okay, I've also took the cover off the windings. Just blew in there with some compressed air, and all these bubbles came out of the stator stack. The lamination stain here. Yeah, that blew all the moisture out, so now in a couple of days, should be ready to fire up. All the moisture should be gone. But before I turn it on, I'm gonna get these bearings lubricated. They're a little bit on the stiff side. That just comes off, which sits on there. And that goes on there. I think it goes that way. Yeah, that way. And this bolt holds the um, screws into the motor shaft, pulls the fan on and holds the fan blades on. So yeah. I think they're the right way around. We'll find out when we fire it up in a couple of days, so let that sit. It's pretty much hot enough in here anyway for it in the dry, so let that sit for a couple of days and should be ready, dried up and ready to fire up. Put them there. Might put a light bulb in, see, how, see what happens. They're there, let them sit for a couple of days and yeah, they'll be dry and ready to fire up. And they get those bearings up the and it's just like new again. So yeah. Now you fix up your range hood. It's got a plastic motor holder. And that's how you clean it. Be an industrial degreaser. Some low pressure water. I've got low pressure around the motor. High pressure on everything else. Yeah. Come up very good. So yeah, thanks for watching.